Welcome and thanks for joining us. My guest today is Bill Wright, the Senior Director for North American Government Affairs at Splunk. Hey, Bill, thanks for being here. Hey, thank you, Justin. Appreciate it. And so obviously the White House has come out with its big zero trust strategy, very extensive document, covers a lot of ground. What do you think should be the key focus areas for the Biden administration and agencies when it comes to enhancing security you know, this year and, and even beyond that? Yeah, I think there's a, a lot of areas where, uh, where the administration could put its uh, time and resources. But I think, you know, first and foremost, I think it's the recognition that, that security uh, is, in fact, that at its essence, a data problem. So whatever threats uh, we face today, whatever threats we face in the future, um, data will really be the primary source for countering it. So, uh, you know, the key is finding the right data having the tools to understand what that data is in fact trying to tell you, and then having the ability to act on it, act on it quickly and act on it confidently. So government agencies, I think, are creating you know, more data than ever before, um, yet we find too often they, they fail to, to capitalize on all of that information they're collecting. So in the context of zero trust, um, you know, what we're hearing um, as far as pain points from our, our federal partners um, is an inability to identify those assets uh, and assess their trustworthiness across a zero trust ecosystem. So corralling all the disparate technology tools. Um, these are tools that have built up uh, over many years, often legacy technology, um, and understanding you know, what, the, what the data is that's out there and what it can be telling you about your environment. So um, you know, while there's an ocean of information, um, many organizations, including uh, most of uh, our federal agencies, really lack the visibility uh, across their infrastructure and or cloud components um, and connected devices to make those confident decisions. Um, there's a real need to have that very granular, uh, continuous visibility into every component, um, including real-time risk scores and the infrastructure uh, and context so that you're able to evaluate the, the trustworthiness and, the, um, and do it confidently, which is really what zero trust is about. So I think there may be some uh, low hanging fruit the administration can, can focus on uh, right up front. Um, of course, uh, zero trust is really a journey. It's, it's, it's not a, a, a final destination, um, but there are some areas where I think there can be some immediate improvements uh, to security posture, um, you know, two that kind of come to mind. Um, and I think are table stakes for, for zero trust architecture to begin with around, of course, identity and access management and, and network segmentation. So, um, you know, maybe that would be a good place to, 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 to sort of start with those efforts or to focus those efforts, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I, I mean, identity, there, there's obviously several foundational pillars to zero trust, but identity seems to be the one that keeps on coming up and up yeah. again in these conversations. Are you finding the same thing that's a really big emphasis for agencies and organizations or so far? Absolutely. And, um, you know, I, it, it is, in fact, I think listed as the uh, pillar number one. Um, so, yeah, that that's generally uh, we're hearing about the identity pillar, you know, usually right off the bat. Yeah. And so obviously agencies are, you know, starting from a uh, from, from the, 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 the one yard line, uh, they're, they're actually, they've been doing a lot, uh, stemming really from last year's cybersecurity executive order. What are some of the challenges that you've seen agencies, uh, the important ones that you've seen agencies really take on based on that executive order and all the actions that have flowed out of that? Yeah, so you know, first off that CyberEO was quite expansive, uh, kind of a, a shock and awe, uh, document, very aggressive timelines. Um, you know, it, as you note, it focused on, on key baseline security measures, um, things that we find very important, universal logging standards, of course, multi-factor authentication, uh, reliable asset inventories, uh, ubiquitous encryption, and of course, uh, that agencies need to move forthrightly uh, to adopt zero trust architecture. So this is a lot of work, a lot of big challenges. Um, and this would be challenges for any organization. Despite what you hear, there is no single vendor um, that can complete, uh, you know, provide a complete zero trust solution. That's just a myth. Um, um, there is no single technology. Of course, it's a framework. You know, a framework 
that's made up of, of interlocking technical, but also business architecture. So the best zero trust approaches are going to include programmatic, uh, organizational changes. Um, it's gonna incorporate technology, policy, and, and even culture. Um, and for the federal government, it means the challenge of, of working with many partners, so both in the public sector and the private sector. Um, agencies that are further along in the zero trust journey, and there are some, uh, you know, we'll need to partner with those agencies that are just getting started. So uh, exchanging information, exchanging playbooks, um, potentially staff. Uh, for industry, we've also got some challenges. Um, not only will it be crucial for government and industry to partner, um, but it's gonna become increasingly important for, for us, for vendors uh, to work together, help agencies create a more seamless uh, zero trust environment. You know, we uh, as trusted vendors uh, will need to play well together with each other uh, and our technologies are gonna be, need to be tightly integrated. Um, you know, I'm proud to say that, that we at Splunk have uh, been doing this with a number of uh, big vendor partners uh, across the zero trust ecosystem already. Um, you know, another potential challenge, I think, for, for agencies um, in, in implementing zero trust is, is, uh, is culture. Um, uh, there are some aspects of zero trust that seem counterintuitive to a lot of IT teams that we're hearing, uh, that have been trained on decades of perimeter-oriented depth and defense strategies. Of course, zero trust requires a change in that mindset from defending that perimeter to literally defending everywhere, uh, inside as well. Uh, and this is a fundamental uh, uh, shift in mindset, I think. Yeah, I mean, that that culture problem always seems like one of the biggest barriers to any yeah. sort of technology security transformation. Yeah. What, what are some of the ways that, you know, you think leaders in, in government and in industry can kind of approach that, that challenge? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the tools are out there, I think, to help. You know, I, I would say uh, automation in particular um, is going to be absolutely essential uh, to any zero trust strategy. Uh, it's all about speed in this case. Um, if users find zero trust uh, cumbersome or slow, they're going to find workarounds. It's human nature. Um, and that undermines the, the goals and, and protections that zero trust offers in the first place. So um, moreover, if zero trust provides too much friction, um, when they're, you know, when when citizens are are trying to reach their their crucial services, um, shortcuts are going to be found, you know, nearly every time. Convenience is always going to be swapped for security. But security and speed don't necessarily need to be mutually exclusive. Um, as I mentioned, these automation tools can enforce zero trust policies. They can automate repetitive tasks uh, and orchestrating workflows. Uh, automation tools can assist in in the monitoring and the managing of what we discussed earlier, these disparate security systems uh, through one single interface and, and orchestrate those remediations. Um, there's been a tremendous amount of, of innovation in this area. You know, as I said, you walk through the RSA uh, Expo and there's, there's a, a, a lot of innovation going on in this, this space, um, that's both in the government and the private sector side around the practical application of, of AI and, and machine learning um, to help sift through those volumes of data uh, you know, to bring out the only the most relevant aspects uh, across this kind of hybrid infrastructure and put it into one view. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And and so and so agencies have this August twenty twenty four yeah. deadline to meet some of these big zero trust goals. What tips would you offer to agencies? Best practices and and lessons learned as they they move toward that. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. That deadline is uh, is looming. Uh, uh, and, and moving very quickly. So, um, you know, I guess a few pieces of advice. Um, one would be, to, you know, engage that trusted industry partner. Um, you know, we all have vested interests um, in, in, in your success there for agencies. Um, second, I think understand, as I mentioned earlier, that zero trust is in fact a journey. There is no, it's not a final destination. You're not going to be completed with zero trust and, and get to you know, check it off your, um, uh, your, your to-do list. Um, and lastly, while there are, you know, are certainly tools to help with this, um, it's not solely a technology problem um, to fix, zero trust that is. Um, it's also about people, it's about process. Um, organizations need to ensure that the, their own uh, feedback loop 
you know, is, is greased and well-worn uh, between the decision makers um, in those organizations and then those working actually with the data. Uh, at the end of the day, all the data in the world can be collected, it can be aggregated, it can be correlated um, to define as much context as possible. But, you know, as a defender, uh, the question is always going to come back to what do I need to find out about the user? What do I need to know about the device, a system, uh, or an app in order to make an informed and confident decision about who and when to give access, which truly is the heart of, uh, of Zero Trust. And again, I'd like to thank today's guest, Bill Wright, the Senior Director for North American Government Affairs at Splunk. I'm your moderator, Justin Doubleday, and you're listening to Federal News Network. Now let me send you back to the studio for more on the Zero Trust Cyber Exchange.